haven't been live in a little bit, but I am here and it's the first day of October. So I thought it would be fun to come on and just say hello, happy October, and do a Halloween sign, which is actually an October 31st sign. Um, I've seen October and the word, or the number 31, all over the internet where people have made them into shirts or signs and it's basically just saying, you know, like, it's a holiday, like any other holiday, they put the number with it. And I've seen them kind of like displayed on mantles and console tables. And so I thought it would be fun to make one and do it in a sign kit. So um, I kind of put together a little graphic for it today and cut it out and made a stencil. And so let's go ahead and get started in making a October 31 sign. And I even added some like spooky, like not spooky, but cute looking bats because when it comes to Halloween, it's not my favorite holiday that I like to decorate as far as doing like the ghouls and the like scary blood and guts kind of thing, but I do like it kind of cute and you know like spiders, cats, maybe some bat decor along with like the orange, the black, and the purples. So I brought in a new um, kit. Um, that we're going to turn into just a simple sign that you can layer. You can put this on your mantle. You can put it like, I'm gonna put mine, I think, on the console um, that we have at our front door. It's like an entryway table and um, use it like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so for this, I'm doing a 12 by 12 sign. And I like to kind of match up my um, projects to where the front, um, the top of my boards kind of go with the um, sign with the grain. So I think I'm going to actually maybe turn this one. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it this way. I do kind of like the grain going the, up and down. So I, I like to just kind of map that out before I actually start painting it. And I'm gonna pick my side too. Um, I just feel like that kind of helps with it. I do kind of like it this way. Uh, let's see how that looks. And I just do that, especially if you get one of our kits, that way you just kind of know exactly like the best options for all of your wood um, staying tight with this and so I do feel like I have a little bit off with these but that's okay we're gonna go ahead and do this one anyway um so let's get started normally I do stain my wood blocks but um, my trim pieces but I'm not gonna do that first I'm actually going to, hold on, let me get that out of the way. I'm actually going to um, paint my back of my board, like my background color first, because I think that it will have time to dry, and then I'll move on to the stain, and then we'll lay the stencil. I always think um, we should let the stain dry, but I'm gonna switch it up this time and do the background of the sign first. And I'm going to do it in a bright orange pumpkin color. This is called Pumpkin Orange. Um, it's acrylic apple barrel paint. You can get this from Walmart. And I'm just going to paint the entire back of my sign. And you can see I'm just squirting it on into place. Um, and just going to coat my board here like this. And if you guys are joining, I just wanted to say hello. I can't see who's joining in. Let's see. It says, hey, Mary Jo, how are you? We are making a sign and I am just painting the background of this orange. I almost kind of put too much paint here, um, but that's okay. I thought that this would be really cute to have like on display with the front door and um, kind of put some Halloween decor with it. And we're going to make this sign say October 31. Um, and then they have like a little cute bat design that I put with it. So um, I'm just painting the background orange and I just squirted it out. That makes it a whole lot easier, especially if you're buying the apple barrel paint. It has the little cap lid where you can do that. And then this is a brush. I believe I also got this one from Walmart. It's a pretty fat brush. Um, 
it just allows you to, to kind of paint this on real nice, real smooth, and in a quick way because it's so wide. Um, you could certainly do a foam brush. I typically tend to do that or send one in each kit that I sell out of the shop that's a sign like this. But for this case, I just decided to pick this fat brush up and use it just to kind of like speed this along. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint the sides of my sign here. And I'm gonna move it just a little bit to get the excess off and just wipe it off with my, um, my brush that way. This has a good coverage, but it's also going to dry, hopefully fairly quickly. We will see. Let me see, I'm gonna go ahead and get this side here. And I'm wiping my excess off my brush just to make sure I have all of that. And I am really liking this pumpkin orange color. I'm not a huge fan of the orange color at all but for this time of year for Halloween for my kids of course I always like to add that purple color too I think that that's super fun on any kind of Halloween design it helps make the the orange like the brightness of the orange not look so like oh you know do you guys know what I mean all right so that's a really good brush you can pick one of those up at Walmart we're gonna kind of like let this whole base of our sign dry and then we're going to come back with the black okay so in the meantime while we are doing that i'm going to and i got orange paint on my shirt Uh oh i actually have this shirt listed in the shop it says pumpkin kisses and harvest wishes so that's super fun i'm going to stain our um our trim and get that kind of ready. And I just picked up some trim that I had already pre-cut. Um, so it's gonna go on this side. I think one of them I cut a little long, so it might have a little gap in it, but that's just because I was in a hurry to get on here. Um, so if you're interested in the stain that I'm using, this is my favorite, favorite, favorite stain to use. It is odorless. There is no smell to it whatsoever. And um, it's called Old Barn Living Stain. And it actually is um, like a gray brown color. And when you wipe the excess off, it is um, that weathered like barn door look, hence the name Old Barn Living. And it, um, this color is weathered. So if you're interested in that, you can check them out. I think they're on Instagram, they have a website. You don't really see it in the store. You can use any store-bought brand though if you want to on your trim, it's up to you. I'm gonna cut my um, sponge down just to make it kind of fit a little bit better into this stain. And then just kind of like let the excess kind of drip off here off my sponge. Cause I don't want it to have too much on there. I just want to have enough to give my board a color but nothing like too strong or too crazy. So what I like to do is I like to kind of just wipe it on, almost as if I'm wiping it off, but I'm wiping it on. And that just kind of helps create that colored look on the wood. And you guys, I don't know, can you see that? You see the difference? I'm just kind of wiping it on with the edge of the brush and then Smudge drying it, if that makes any sense. And also, you gotta do both sides. So make sure you do both sides, all six sides, actually, of your trim. Like that. And then, same thing, just put some on, and then just kind of wipe it into place. Um, that's like the easiest way to do this. And it also, it helps it absorb the color, but it also just helps it to dry so much faster which makes this project quicker. Um, of course you can take your time and let it dry like overnight or whatever. Um, if you have the time or want to do that, that's totally up to you. So let's see, who's all joining me? Let me get close and see who is here so I can say hello to you. Barbara, hello Barbara, hi Pam, hi Mary Jo. 
You guys, make sure that you share the um, live because we like to do some giveaways sometimes around here or I announce them like over on Instagram. Sometimes I'll message you and say, hey, you want a giveaway? And sometimes we'll send some projects and stuff like that. So make sure you sprinkle the video. We haven't done any in a while. I need to do some. Um, we need to do some giveaways. So, I appreciate you sprinkling and sharing our video, our projects, because um, it helps my page to grow. And that's one of the things I like to do here at Crafty Life Mom, is share some projects. We also have a Facebook community page, if you're not a part of that. We don't have a lot going on in there right now, but I'm hoping to like get some projects posted or put some free files in that group, because... Um, I know you guys sometimes join my page if you're like a Cricut or a Silhouette user. Um, you like to come for that. So I have some great tutorials on CraftyLifeMom.com where I share like how to use, you know, certain things or I show projects on there. So definitely want to check that out. All right. So let's keep moving along. So who's excited for October? Is anybody excited that we are moving into like fourth quarter of the year today? We're getting closer to the end. <laughs> anybody excited about that? Or you're just indifferent, you don't care? Um, tell me what's going on. What are you excited for going into now that it's October? Just put a comment and leave it down below. I'd love to see what you guys are all up to. So... All right, so I'm working on these pieces of trim. I have um, almost three done, so it doesn't take very long to actually do. It's very easy. And this kit that I am doing today is going to be listed in the shop. We'll get it up over, hopefully by the end of the weekend, and if you're on the newsletter, you'll be first to know when it's available so you can grab one. Um, because this is gonna be a super cute sign. Perfect for Halloween. I think it's going to be great. And I like the barn look of the signs that we have going on. I'm starting to get kind of a collection in my home. And when they kind of all are nestled together, I really like how they look, like kind of grouped together. It's really something fun um, to kind of style and create on my front console. So, all right. So, let's see here. I've got piece number four that I'm working on. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick what it looks like stained and not stained. So here is the non-stained color. Let me move that so it doesn't get. And then here's like a stained one. You see the difference? Totally like the look of the barn color versus the other. Um, let's take a look here and get this all going and hopefully we can get the um this pumpkin color it looks like it's drying it's not completely dry yet so i'm gonna have to get it to dry so that we can get our um stencil laid on it so might need a hair dryer, you can always try to like speed the drying process along on your acrylic paint on the hair dryer. But once you lay down your stencil, I don't recommend putting the dryer on there with the stencil because that will, um, it could melt the like stencil material. So never do that. And you'll see here in just a minute kind of what I'm talking about. Don't forget to do all six sides too of your trim. So here we go. All done on that. We're gonna put those to the side. Let me kind of clean up my little bit of mess here and put my lid on here with my trim paint and get this going here. So I have this stencil that I created. It says um, October 31, so obviously it's representing the Halloween holiday coming up. Um, I don't really know what's going on with trick-or-treating or if my kids are going to be able to do that, but we're definitely still going to celebrate. We're definitely still going to do some fun, fun things to kind of like make it Halloween 
um, like around here. So let me just kind of show you my board here. Um, let's see, can you hand me some paper towels? We got a little bit of smudge happening right here, so I just kind of want to wipe that off and get this kind of dry. But this is the board that we're working on. It's a 12 by 12 board. And I'm just going to take a couple of paper towels here and just get the edges dried off because see when I'm touching it, I'm getting it on my hand. And it's getting kind of like to be a mess. And what I want it to do is be dry. So when I lay my stencil down, it is not going to smudge or smear or take the paint and kind of like, you know, uh, bleed into my design. So that's one thing you want to do. So I just kind of grab a couple of paper towels and just kind of wipe these edges down. You certainly don't have to paint the edges. I just use that to kind of help get the whole um, look kind of done. And then I'm just taking the dry paper towel and just wiping any excess off my board here. Now, like I said, if you can certainly take a hair dryer to it, um, but if you paint the background first, you can skip that if you're doing this technique um, because this is making it pretty dry for the most part, at least dry enough to where we can lay our stencil down on top. Now, if you have all the time in the world for it and you're not live like me, then you can certainly walk away, go do something, come back and let it fully, fully dry for like an hour or two. But for live purposes, I just kind of want to show you, you see how it's got like some wet shine in there, you know, it's not completely dry. That is totally okay. Um, it just needs to have some drying happening, okay? And we're almost there. I'm just gonna give it just a minute to kind of get a little bit more dry there. I might fan it even. And while I'm doing that, I'll show you the design. So this is the stencil. I know it's kind of hard to see, um, but it's gonna say October 31. So while it's still drying, I'm gonna prep the stencil to be laid down on the, um, the orange background. And so what you do is when you get your stencil, you pull off your paper backing so that you reveal nothing but the blue stencil material. And that's kind of like what I'm doing here. We just wanna, oh, my tool picked up. You just wanna reveal the back off, okay? And that one just kind of tore for a little bit. So we have a few like pieces there that just didn't come out completely, which is totally fine. You can just lift them right off like that, super easy. And this is a design or a kit that's gonna be in the, um, the shop. So you'll totally be able to recreate this one with the kit. Okay, so, and this stencils, the stencils, we also offer them like just the stencil only. So you could totally get just the stencil cut and you could do your own wood or you could do your own background, like you could do metal. If you have a surface that you wanna do, totally could do that. It's a one-time use stencil though. Um, and the main reason for that is, is because of the material it is. Once you stencil it and you peel it up, um, there's a possibility that it could tear, something like that could happen. So that's why I say it's a one use stencil. There are some companies out there, um, I don't really know all their names or anything like that, but they actually create reusable stencils um, if you're interested in just a stencil. But for this, these are kits that we create. The designs are my own. So for the most part, these are one of a kind stencil designs that you're gonna get. And um, we use them to sell in the kits and to create them for the kits. So it's not um, something that you can pretty much get anywhere. You can probably find similar, but not the exact same design. Okay, so what I like to do is when it comes time to laying down the stencil onto your board, I kind of like to line up where I want it to be, and then I kind of just go like in a U shape and lay it down. And you'll see here, this, I'm gonna line this up like so, and then I kind of make my U, it's not a huge U, and then I just lay it down like so. And then we're gonna press, and I'm gonna push the stencil material down onto the wood. and. Um, if you have anything like a credit card or a um, squeegee tool like this, that also helps to kind of just push the stencil down into the board or the material. And then what we're going to do is, in this case too, you can see, um, 
what we're going to do is I'm going to lift this up actually and relay it because I don't like how the O is hanging off just a little bit. So let me fix that. You see, I was talking and I got it a little crooked. So let me realign that. Okay, so our goal now is to make sure that this can stick down there and it's paint, so it's hard sometimes. You saw how easy it was for me to lift it off. We want to get this down onto our board and then we want to peel off the top clear sheet. And that can kind of take the most time because you kind of have to do it in a slow motion where you don't rip the stencil material. But there are two um, layers here. So we've got to take off the top layer in order to reveal our stencil material. So this is the slowest part of our design and it is just the way it happens to work. So just bear with me while I get through this part of it. Um, I would love to say you could easily do it in one swooping method or motion, but that has never worked for me. It just doesn't work out that way. Um, so just take your time with this part because this is the slowest part of it all. So I don't need that. All right, now we're going to pull the, um, he brought the hair dryer for me, which was sweet because um, he heard me saying that. So when you want your paint to dry, you can use the hair dryer, like a, just a basic hair dryer to dry the background paint. But ours, um, it dried pretty quickly, so I'm not gonna need that. Now one trick, I've taught this in a class before, and one thing that we've done is we will go ahead and just cut away part of that clear material in our stencil, um, just to kind of keep the stencil from relaying itself down like the the cover sheet we just want to keep it where it stays intact so and I also like to pull at an angle because that kind of helps with this right here let's see there we go I got my little e-pop coming up and there we go so who's all on here let's see is that Cameron or Trista? Hi guys, let's see. Ashley, hello. Hello Tammy, how are you guys tonight? I hope you're doing good. Crafting tonight. I'm a little tired. This week has been tired with the kids and the school project things going on. You guys know we had Awana. They started back at church, so we had the crazy hair night this week. So we were prepping for that. That was all last night. That made me tired, so. Anyway, I had I was like, I haven't done anything on my Crafty Life Mom, and so I am here today with my craft. Okay, and I'm having a time getting it over this October, but it's gonna come. You just have to be patient. Don't get frustrated, especially if you're doing these kits. Like, you've gotta just take your time. This is probably the hardest part of it and the better you are at being patient with it, the bigger the reward. Some of you kind of know that already. We've had to like sometimes tweak how you guys pull these um, stencils apart, like how you pull the, the clear part off because it can take some time. So I'm gonna see if I can pull it ahead of time without getting my hand in the orange paint there. It's kind of hard. There we go. And once it starts to come, it starts to really work. But you've got to be patient. You don't want to rip or tear the blue part. You don't want to rip or tear the blue stencil material. That's the part that is the most important in keeping your design your design. A little tear or a little snag can cause bleeding um, in your painting job. It can cause, you know, some issues. So you definitely got to take your time on this. We all like to hurry up and get to the fun part of it, which is the painting part, but if you're not taking your time, you could make some errors here. So just take your time, take your time. You can't stress that enough. Um, all right, so here we go. And you see, look, I'm having some lifting just a little bit as I deal with it. Don't get frustrated, just keep going. I know some of you are like, I don't have the patience for that, but you like the sign and that's fine. I have an option on the website. If you want this design or you want the sign, we can make it for you. We actually have an option for that. So I've got it all ways. You can make the kit yourself. 
You can get just the stencil, or if you like it so much, you can just have us make it for you, kind of like a fake it, right? Because it is handmade, um, and we can just make it for you, and then that way we just ship it to you all done, and you get it and display it. <laughs> easy peasy, all right? Lemon squeezy, as my kids say. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so here we go. I've got almost like 60% of it done, so just another 40% to peel back. And like I said, sometimes as we get going, I cut off that clear that I've already pulled away. And what that does is it allows me just to take it and put it off to the side and get it out of my hair, right? Like I don't have to deal with it anymore. I don't have to worry about it rolling back down and I can focus on the rest of the sign here being pulled the top layer. So just a tip that I've kind of discovered in doing some of these signs, okay? So if that's you, when you're working with it, that might help you um, with this. So let's see, I've got that. Let's just get this little bitty bit going here. This three, I don't want it to tear, so, you know, you just gotta be patient with it and work through as you as you pull it up. And I'm almost there. Once you get to your corners going, you can kind of start pulling in opposite directions, which give it that little bitty extra give that you're kind of looking for, right? So just be waiting for it. All right, so my October is pretty, pretty good there. So now I just gotta get my 31 and my Three, it keeps wanting to lay back down, so I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna just peel this like that, kind of like in the air a little bit. That kind of is gonna help with pulling this. And then to the back. You gotta be careful. I'm gonna cut it some more. See, it always pays to just cut away what you don't, what is already done. I think that's a big tip that um, I could give you with these kits if you wanted to make it yourself. Um, because this is the most time consuming part of the whole process right here. The peeling of the stencil top. All right. Almost done guys, it's looking good. Looking real good. Hopefully I can make it to the edge here. Get that, you just gotta hold it down into place. And there we go, we're all free. Okay, so now at this point, you just wanna make sure that your stencil is laying down correct. Sometimes with that process, it you see how it's just kinda of lifted a little bit? I wanna make sure that every part that is to be stenciled doesn't have a bubble in it, doesn't have a ripple in it. So we wanna get that down and correct. And the reason that is, is because you don't want any smudging going on you don't want any of that happening with your stencil. So I like to use my little squeegee and just make sure that it just kind of adheres down into that wood, right? And I just kind of folded that back there. You want it to adhere to the wood. Now, with all that being said, I do have a trick that I'm gonna share with you that kind of helps to prevent bleeding. Um, when you have these designs, when you have multiple kinds of paint, and I've got like a little bit of glue or something there, you have the possibility that it can bleed or they mix together, right? We don't want to create that. So this case, Mod Podge is your magic friend. What the Mod Podge does is it actually kind of seals, let me look this just a little bit here, it seals the um, stencil kind of into place and it acts as a first layer of paint. And so if the Mod Podge, it's actually a glue like material. If it bleeds, that's totally fine because it dries clear and it doesn't um, show the bleeding, right? Because it's a clear product. So what you wanna do is use the Mod Podge as almost as your first layer of paint. And what it does is because it is also a glue material, it seals down your stencil. Now, I'm telling you all of this, I don't want you to think, oh, well, 
mine still bled. It doesn't 100% save it from not bleeding, but it increases the chances of it to not happen, right? So it, it's, it's almost like preventative if it could be, okay? And like I can even see here in my stencil right there on my little bee that had like a little lift, it actually bled right underneath it, but I'm not worried about it because it's clear. So because I can see that, I'm definitely making sure that I've got a seal there now with this Mod Pod. There we go. I kind of just like to give it that thin little coat and it like, it really dries like kind of in minutes. So you don't have to walk away from it. I mean, we're, you're gonna see here in just a few minutes, I'm going to actually begin with my painting, but I like doing this Mod Podge layer because it just seals down that stencil, okay? And it just, I don't know, it helps that bleeding not to happen. It still can happen, but that's why we have little tiny paint brushes and we can always go back and touch up. But if we can have minimal of that happening with Mod Podge, then the better, right? So that's my philosophy on this little technique. You can totally skip it or use it, whatever you wanna do. It's up to you, make it yours. All right, and I'm just kinda of like, now I'm just kinda of doing this circular motion, smearing it all in, making sure that we've got some pretty good coverage here. Hopefully I'm minimizing um, bubbles and smearing. I see I have a little bit of a ripple in here and that just happens sometimes, so you know, you gotta do your best with it. But as I'm doing this, like it's already drying, it's already got like a little bit of a tack to it, and it's just already creating that first little barrier, I guess. So that's super good. All right, and it's like got some sticky, sticky fingers. So I'm gonna wipe that off here. I have some wipes to kind of get that all cleaned off my fingers, which is a good thing making sure it's all laid down. I have a little bit like of a bump right there. You could see I could probably, I don't know, I could probably pick it up and relay it, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm just gonna try and watch that as I paint. But let me go ahead and lift this up and just kind of show you how it's looking. You see that, how it's got the, you see the shine with the light there. I'm trying to show you how it's, the Mod Podge kind of creates that first layer or that first barrier, that's what you want, okay? All right, so let me see. I think we have some more people that join or have shared, so thank you. Let's see, hi, hey, Danielle. Hey, Tabitha, I'm trying to see, look here. Hey, Nicole, hi, guys. All right, thanks for coming. To the I do wanna show you guys really quick. I'm gonna give this a minute to dry. I created, um, we have a couple of friends getting married. I actually created a, um, like a, I don't know, it's like a sign, it could be a tray, it could be whatever, for a couple that's getting married in a couple weeks. And let me bring that over here. I wanted to show you, I'm gonna kind of cover their names, but this is all done with stencil material and stained wood. Pretty cool, right? So like all of the things that you can create with this technique or this um, craftability thing is very, very cool. Um, possibilities are really endless for signs and personalization. Lately, I've just been doing um, a lot of the holidays and those kinds of signs. Um, but once we get going here, I'll probably have some more Christmas ones. I'm really looking forward to doing some signs or designs that are year round, so that's kind of fun. All right, so let's move on. Let's do the stencil part and then it'll be good to go and we will add our trim and we will check it out. We'll see what we got. So I'm gonna add um, some black and I thought about doing, I know it's not typical, but you guys tell me in the comments really quick. Do you think I should do purple bat? Right? What do you think about that? A purple bat? Do you think that would be super cute? Or should I stick to the traditional black bats? Um, there's a couple little bats in the design here. And so I thought it would be fun to um, maybe change it up and put a little purple into the sign. Or should I just leave it traditionally black? What do you guys think? Black or purple bats? Leave a comment. Let's see. Cute and purple. Okay. Um, we maybe we'll do one in purple, one in black. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, guys. I keep moving my 
um, camera there, so I keep getting some notifications and I can't see all the comments. Actually, I have, I have a new iPad, I just need to use it. It's right here, um, and then that way I can totally reach your comments if you have them. I keep forgetting that that's what I need to do, and I'm hoping that it's not going to give me any backlash right now as I go into it because the sound I think still plays on here. So give me just a second. Let me see if I can find myself right here. Yeah. Oh, it is. Look at that. Okay, it's not working because it's too many, it's too much sound. Sorry about that. Okay, but I can still kind of see it. So I'm working on answering comments and seeing who joins me um, because it's kind of hard to figure out when you're not live until you're live. And then if it's, you know, bothersome because of the noise, I don't do it. So I still got to figure that out. <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a makeup sponge, guys. This is just like a triangular sponge and I'm using the fatter end of it. Oh, my husband brought his phone so I can see the comment. Thank you. All right, and so I'm dabbing it into my blob of paint, like that, and then I'm sponge dipping off all the excess off to the side. And this is the best way to like paint um, something for stencils, okay? It's still gonna have that painted look, but this is the best way to prevent the bleeding. It's just a blot, 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 and blot. So I kind of like to blot in the, um, let me see if I can do this upside down a little bit here. I like to kind of blot into the blue area, like that's between the one and this letter E, because that's where I'm gonna start, and then kind of just start blotting into the letters, like that. So I start off the side, and then I blot. So like the first piece of paint, I guess you could say, or the first like specks of paint, technically aren't where the stencil needs to be. It's where the stencil actually is, if that's making sense. It's not the actual like cutout, it's the side of it. And then I just blot into that area. That way, hopefully, I don't have any bleeding. Um, and I'm just filling it in with this blot motion. Now your darker colors, um, sometimes you have to do more than one coat. And I will, I'll show that to you. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of lightly do the word October. And you'll see it's almost like it's not filled in good, right? You're going to look at this and you're going to be like, gosh, she didn't get much paint on there. She needs to put more on it. And that's actually by design. Um, I don't, I'd rather have excess in the space than in the actual stencil cutout parts. Because remember, the more paint I'm putting on there, the more risk I have of it smudging. And the trick to it not doing that is first the Mod Podge and then actually doing the cutout. So you can see there, you see how it's like, oh, you can still see the orange through the word. And then like the ER on the end, which is right over here by my finger, it's kind of too dark, right? That's because that was a heavier hand. I should have kept it real light. And the reason that is, is because that's what's preventing it from getting any kind of smudging. I'll do the bat just so you can see like that. You see this bat? It's real light, right? That's the technique. So now I'll do a second and possibly a third blobbing technique over that in just a minute to kind of help it um, get multiple miniature thin, thin, thin coats than one big hefty handed one. And that is just so it does not bleed. So let me see if I can do this um, upside down. I'll show you here. Like you see how it's super light I'm not really filling it all the way in. The two and three coats will actually fill in this orange on the stencil. And that's how I kind of want it to be because I don't want it to bleed. But when we're done, it will be solidly filled. I hope that makes sense. Um, you can kind of see, I'm just like sponging it there. It's not perfect. You can kind of see, oh, it's not, you know, and that's fine. That's what we want it to be. We want the Mod Podge and this first layer to be the layer that soaks into the wood so it doesn't bleed when we come in with a larger blob of paint. All right, so I'm going to come back down here now to my October, 
and start it the same way and just kind of fill in where it didn't fill in before, thus darkening that word, right? Just kind of redoing it. So it takes a couple of coats, but that again is the best way. And so I got a little heavy on that part, so I might have a little bleeding there. Um, that's fine, I can fix it. I have some small, thin, um, you know, paint brushes. I can always tweak it. But if you cannot do it and just, you know, come out with a perfect uh, stencil job, then by all means, do this method so it does, you don't have to, right? Okay, all right, so we've got that. Let me go back here to my E and my R. And just kind of get that. So let's see, all right, any comments? Let's see, okay, you guys said purple, cute in the purple. Cute purple bats, and I started to do one in black. That's fine, I can go back with my purple and totally do the um, purple bat on the one that I did black there by mistake. All right, so I'm gonna fill in my 31 with another coat. Also, like if you do this and you do like a red, or a white on a colored background, you definitely have to do two, three, maybe even a fourth coat of this blotting method. Almost think about like when you put your makeup on, you know how you pat it in with the sponge, you blot it in with the sponge. Um, that is the best way, okay? Do you peel the stencil when the paint is wet or after it dries? Okay, so Pam, that's a really good question. So when I was actually making the, um, the wedding gift that I showed you earlier, um, I kind of waited and um, came back with a third or fourth coat after it dried a little bit and it was almost too long of a wait. So I prefer peeling it with a wet paint. And the reason that is, is because number one, I used to include the paints with the kits, but we don't anymore because people like to do their own colors. They don't use them. Um, and I had the one case where somebody had some spilled paint, maybe because of the mail handler. I don't know, but so instead of having a mess on their hands when it's delivered, these little paints are 50 cents and they're way more than what we were providing, even though you, you could get a ton of projects out of the one. So um, we don't have the paints in there anymore, but if you purchase and use acrylic paints, craft paints, which is what most of the people who do these kits use, then um, yes, you wanna peel it wet. And that's because acrylic paint, if you've ever seen it dry, which I know all of you have probably sat and watched paint dry, right? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm sure you haven't. But if you've seen like where paint has dried a little bit, it's not all the way dry. If you peel the stencil, it has the ability to kind of pull the acrylic paint with it and drag it or tear your actual paint. So make sure um, you peel it wet. That's what I would recommend. Um, I used to kind of say you could wait until it was dry, but the more I work with the acrylic paints versus like, you know, any kind of oil paint or something like that, you definitely want to do it wet. I just think that that is better all around for a better result. So if you want to wait for it to dry, then you can totally do that too. So that's why I also kind of like do these little, um, like most of these, when I do them live, you see that I do them pretty quickly within 30 minutes and I peel it right then and there um, just to keep it wet. So I'm gonna show you my 31 and my October right here just to kind of show you what I'm working with. The other thing too is if you peel it wet or it bled on your stencil, the good thing about it being still wet too is you can fix it. You've got a teeny tiny paintbrush if you have one, Dollar Tree sells them in little kits. I will show you guys here in just a minute. You can totally take your paint after it is dry and, you know, tweak it. I did some really tiny details on that one and I am definitely not a hand letterer or I don't have like the best handwriting. I easily just was able to tweak it with a teeny tiny paintbrush and I'll show you guys. Um, I'll put it real close to the camera so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's do some purple bats really quick. And again, I'm just starting off to the side to dab off my excess and going over it like that. And I'm gonna have to do a couple coats on this one. Hopefully it doesn't smear um, or bleed. I might have that going on there. Let's see. 
my little one bag, the stencil kind of lifts as I dab it. So I'm hoping that it doesn't lift. And I think that's just because I probably should have let the background dry first. Um, now the one bat that's purple that had a black first, I think that one's showing up a little bit better. So I'm trying to kind of keep that going on the second one. We'll see. Um, let me see if I can let that dry for a minute. Let me just kind of go back with my black and do a little bit of touch up down here. It is starting to dry, so I am going to want to peel it pretty soon. Um, so you can kind of see when you get to this part of it, you kind of, you got to work a little fast, but you, you got to do multiple coats. So kind of keep that in mind, okay? Keep that, keep the paint wet if you can. I mean, some of it's going to dry, but if you're doing the blobbing technique, even if it does dry because it's a lesser amount, it hopefully isn't bleeding or going to cause a tear, right? If it's a latexy type paint, you don't want that. All right, so let me just make sure I'm good here. I'll lift this up in a minute and show you guys what it looks like with all the paint blobbing on there. Do you guys have any other questions um, about it? I'm trying to see, let's see. Hi, Tammy, how are you? Oh, I just did that. Let me get it. Make sure I got the purple going on here, not black. I kind of dipped that in the, the black by mistake, but I think it's gonna work out okay. All right, so let me show you. Here it is once it's all, that looks like a whole me hot mess, right? Look, there's my 31, it's all kind of, blobbed out everywhere and that's totally fine now to lift off the stencil right you can peel it at an angle you can do it at a front to back top whatever you're comfortable with I personally like to peel at, a, at an angle hey Tammy how are you I see you and I peel upwards not flat on this okay I peel upward when we lay down the stencil and peel off the clear part, that we peel horizontal. But when it comes to after peeling off this stencil, after it's been painted, after it's you know wet, I peel up. And that's what you wanna do too. You wanna peel up to prevent any kind of drag, any kind of, um, you know, anything that's gonna cause, you see that? Any kind of, oh, and I just did do that. Any kind of smearing, but it's okay. It worked out in our favor, guys. It's not bad. It did good. And then if you have like a silhouette, a cameo, or if you don't have those um, cutting machines, like, and I'm talking like these kind right here. I don't know if you can see. Oh, I got mine on the edge. Like these kind of machines. You guys probably have in your kit those little tools that look like dentist picks. You can totally pick these up from Harbor Freight. They sell them for a few bucks. Um, this particular one is my new latest favorite. It's actually the Stalls brand. I'll show you, let me zoom up here. You can see, this is the Stalls brand. It's called an Easy Weeder, and it looks like this dentist pick looking thing. They're a few dollars, guys. They're the best little tool, okay? And what to pick up or pick out the little, um, inside it looks like it just had an internet thing so are you guys still with me you guys still with me you say yes i hope you can i hope you're there let me see are you there so just maybe leave me a comment that you can still hear and see me because i saw where it just said internet function or something and i'm not sure what that was about looks like my battery died on my my light but other than that I think I'm okay all right so my little ring light went out on me see that I don't know what happens plugged into that little thing right down in the chair and who knows all right so let me show you this I didn't have really any bad bleeding at all I'm really impressed this is a good um cut sign oh I'm getting thumbs up so they can still hear me it's just my light cut off it just I don't know what happened so he's Mess with it, so I hope the camera doesn't jiggle, but just leave it alone. Look at this. Here it is right here. It's October 31. I'm going to bring it really close so you guys can kind of see the detail here. My purple bats. Let me see. I'm kind of backwards in my camera. La, 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 la. October. 
You can still see my wood grain, but that Mod Podge level or layer, I should say, really, really helps it not to bleed and it gives it that super crisp look, right? And it's paint, so it's gonna last. Now you can definitely put a seal on this. You can do like a, um, you know, you could do a uh, poly on it. Just be careful, don't do a heavy coat. You don't want it to yellow or something like that. Um, I have done it both ways where I do um, put it and then I just left it and just said that's fine with no clear coat on it whatsoever. So now that we've done that, remember we did our trim at the very beginning. So what I want to do, oh, there's my light, thank you. I'm going to go back and add my trim pieces. And what I use to do that is an Airstrike um, nail gun. And mine is by Ryobi. You can totally purchase these at the Home Depot. Um, they're, you know, I mean, they have like different sales and deals there. So you can always get them on sale, but you want to get like the batteries that go with them so that's where the money kind of comes into it but you guys best investment ever right yeah right ob days is what he said i gotta get it over here so this is the airstrike gun it's kind of heavy but i just did that with my left lazy hand so <laughs> you kind of get the idea um and these boards so these kits when you order a kit they come with like the trim option if you want to add the trim or you can get your own trim you can do it without the trim totally up to you and if you do add the trim, we take into consideration that you probably won't have this air strike gun. Hold on one second, let me just. So we pre-drill the holes in it so that you have the nails. And if you have just a basic household hammer, then you can totally, um, you can totally have the trim, you know, uh, put on there with a household hammer because you will have the trim piece and the nails to do so. So I hope that makes some sense, maybe, I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to line this up here because I did have a slight little gap in my trim and that's totally fine. I just wanna show you how it works or how, how it will look. All right, so I'm gonna do that side. These are super cute too, like once you get done, you can totally add a um, bow on it or wood beads and have a, a handle, all of that good stuff, which I absolutely like as well. Okay, we're gonna get this board on here. And on the longer pieces, you have one in the front, one in the back, and um, one in the middle. Ooh, that one shot in there. All right, let me get that down in there real good. There you go. Sorry. All right, and so now I just got to add the top piece. This is looking super good. I just smeared it into some purple paint, so <laughs> I definitely were going to have to go back and fix my... Uh, trim piece on that one but this look overall I really really love I like to look at it from the front just to see which way is the best for um, looking at it from the front so bear with me I will show you the finished look in a second all right get this one in the back all right so this is super cute. I really like the way it turned out. It's definitely the look I was going for. Look how cute this is. Let me make sure I'm not leaning on my paint. <laughs> look how cute this sign is. What do you guys think? Are we ready for Halloween or what around here? This is super adorable. I really love the way this turned out. I'm going to style this on my front. Um, we have like a console table at the front door. And I have some other like Halloween decor that we will mix in with it like from the dollar store. And so something like this is a unique piece. 
It's different. It adds a little bit more of that classier like touch to the, the holiday and the decor. And I think it's super cute. It's festive. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Yeah, I see some thumbs up. So cute. You love it. I love the trim too. This is my favorite, favorite color, that weathered look. I've started using it like everywhere in my home and it is absolutely gorgeous when it all kind of like ties together by the trim. Um, you can put any colors with it and it's all tied together by the trim. So that is super um, cool because it's actually, it's a good decorating point. You want everything in your house to kind of work together but also be unique and different. Something like just simple, same color trim does that. So that's something I've learned um, and just sharing with you guys. So that's all I had for today. This kit will be listed um, up in the shop, hopefully by Saturday. I will put a post up showing it once it's listed. And I hope you guys have a great night. Happy October. I'm excited for the rest of the year and all the things. So I'll be back soon, hopefully with another project. Um, something a little spooky, maybe a little spooky decor, but still something fun and cute. So I will see you guys soon. Thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you soon. Bye.